Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Sim to Fly and in today's video we're just going to do a full tutorial on the um, on the Zibo 737-800 um, here we are at Heathrow this is uh, my livery by the way I made it um, and we're going to do a short hop to um, Dublin so here we are in the um, in the cockpit of the 737 and you'll notice that ground power it says it's available this is a bug with the Zibo as obviously there is no ground power so what we're going to do first is we're going to find a battery which is here and we're going to switch it to on you'll hear a little click and um, then you just want to put the guard down next thing you want to do is arm the emergency lights so select that down one here a click and put the guard down now we've done that go over to your um, fuel pumps and um, set the uh, number one fuel pump to on come down to the APU click on and then click again to start hold it down for a few seconds and then let go your oil um, temperature sorry about the screaming um, your thing will start to go up and it will come back down and once it's about here um, your AP will start so we're just going to wait for that to um, start and when we're doing that we're just going to turn our lights up I prefer I like to do all of these um, it just makes it easier to see all the um, all the writing and text so now we've done that um, it won't show up until we've started the APU which is available now as you can see that APU gen off bus the APU gen bus is available so we're just going to click the two middle ones down one and two as you heard there was two, two clunks there and now all the lights have um, lit up and you know that the APU is started now we've done that we're gonna um, start from the bottom here so we're gonna leave all of we're not gonna touch any of this we're not gonna touch any of this and we're going to turn these fuel pumps on if you're flying a long distance you'll have fuel in your center tanks um, so you will turn your center fuel pumps on but since we're just doing a small hop, we don't have any fuel in the um, in the center tanks, so we're going to leave them off. Then I will just do this. Actually, it's a bit easier. Here, we're going to switch this to battery, and this to APU gen. You'll see that the little screen thing changes. That's good. Keep going down. Don't see anything um, apparent. We're gonna keep going down here and we're going to put chimes only to on that's the um, no smoking everything else looks good so window heats can go on probe heats can go on hydraulic pumps they can go on and we're going to keep going down everything's good we're going to put our nav lights onto steady if it's dark as well you will switch your logo lights on but as it's not dark we're going to leave them off if my voice sounds a bit croaky by the way I woke up about 20 minutes ago so um, I'm still getting used to being um, awake okay so now we're going to move on to here this is our air temperature so we're going to switch this to um, AFT and what put the trim air on and I like to move these two to the left, one to the right, one to the left. That gives a um, a nice temperature. And these are the packs. So what I so what we want to do is just switch the APU bleed to on. Once we've done that, this is the pressurization. This is important. So we're going to be flying at um, twenty thousand feet today. So we're going to switch this to 20,000 and our landing altitude at Dublin will be um, 280 feet 
So 280 feet, so we're going to switch this to 300. And after you've done that, all the overhead is done. And now we are going to look at the IRS. So we're going to switch this little knob here all the way to heading. Um, all the way to the right, I'll just show you a little bit of view. Um, where am I? Here we go. So, well, as you can see in a minute, once I get this right, we are at heading. And now we want to switch the IRS's to nav. A little number will come up here. That's how long it takes for the IRS to um, align. Both your um, navs are now on align. So that is the overhead nice and done. So before we go on to the FMC, we're just going to do a few tests. First test, we're going to do the engine fire test. One, uh, one click to the left and one click to the right. So our fire is working. We're going to go over to our oxygen and hold it down for uh, approximately five seconds. As you can hear, our oxygen is working. We're going to go up, back up here, to these four switches here. This is the stall test, and this is the overspeed test. And just hold them down for approximately three seconds. So as you can hear, all four tests are working nicely. So now we're going to come right back down to here. And this is where we do the um, ground proximity warning system tests. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a long test. You can do a short test by just pressing the button. But we are going to do a long test. So we are going to hold it down until the orange light comes up on in up. We're going to let go. And it will do its thing. So while um, while that's doing that, we're going to come over to the FMC. So now the ground proximity warning test is done. Um, I just waited until it's done because I didn't know if you'll be able to hear me or not. Um, we're just going to do one more test before the FMC, and that is the auto, um, the, sorry, the takeoff config. So all we're going to do is put the throttles to max, and you heard the beeping, so you know that is correct. So now we're going to go to the FMC. Um, I'm just going to fix some shadows quickly. Didn't work, okay. Um, I'm just going to come to the FMC. And if you don't have Navigraph, it will say Nav Data Out of Date. Um, just clear that. Um, I do have Navigraph, so everything is up to date. So we're going to click um, FMC and pause in it, position in it and your reference airport is the airport you are at. So we are at Heathrow, so we're going to go Echo Golf Lima Lima. And our gate, if you've forgotten your gate, you simply just go up to here, and it will say here, so 561. 561, whoops. 561, slap that in there. On PMDG, on uh, Prepare3D and FSX, it will give a waypoint here. But since it doesn't give us that here, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and our GPSL, we're going to select that and we're going to slap that in there. 
it's a more precise um, more precise position than this okay so now we're going to go to root and EGLL will be already selected so we're going to put that in there destination is Dublin so we're going to put EIMDW um, Echo India Delta Whiskey um, we're going to slap that in the destination if you don't know how to find this just go on to Google and type in whatever airport you want and ICAO and it will come up so our current route is going to be EGLL EIDW I like to call them that, it's nice and simple our runway is 09 left and our flight number is going to be MON 523 Monarch don't um, obviously don't operate anymore so it's just a random flight number I don't, I don't even know if they operated from Heathrow to be honest but hey ho so we're going to activate that it'll give you a little beep and we're going to execute it now we're going to go to perf init this is all your weights so we're going to go over to the um, the avi tab and um, what we're going to do um, right now actually what we're going to do is we're going to press F9 this is if you have ground handling and I'm just going to select all the stairs um, are, we, are we at terminal? yes we are so drive up and we're just going to open the doors by clicking ground services doors and then selecting the ones that you would like I'm just going to turn OBS down a bit in case it's a bit loud there we go okay so now we're on the avi tab on the iPad thing and what we want to do is we want to click fuel weight and balance and um, this is just for boarding things so we're going to click fuel weight and balance payload this is where you work out your payload and um, Simbrief can do it for you but since um, this is just a quick tutorial I'm just going to make it up so I'm going to do one three five four eight you'll see it dip down a bit with the weight and our fuel we're going to do nine five oopsie days what's going on here okay thanks for that nine five four three um, it will say ACT here so that means actually so that's how much fuel is in the aircraft and that's how much we've requested so once we've requested it we're just going to select back and call fuel truck and as you can see um, the fuel truck is here and everything is looking nice and dandy so now we can go back to here if you've in your avi tab thanks if you've um, selected the avi tab and you've gone to realism and you want it on short you won't need to wait for the fuel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the um, the video well the, um, the recording and I'll come back to you once we have loaded all the fuel okay so we are back and I decided that this was more than enough fuel um, 7139 um, it's with Zippo sometimes it switches between both and um, sometimes this will be more than enough and sometimes it won't be enough at all so anyway so we've refueled now and um, it took about five minutes so I'm just going to reset that um, and now we have our numbers so we're going to go right back to the uh, the FMC and here uh, general weight and cruise center of gravity we're just going to click that and it will do it for us our reserves we've got two we're going to click that and our cost index like I said in the um, the Airbus tutorial, you can just Google it, and I've Googled it, and Ryan, uh, not Ryanair, Monarch is um, 2 Okay, this one doesn't have Monarch, so I'm just going to use Ryanair's, which is six. Um, I was planning, I've got the website up, and I was planning to do Ryanair before from Manchester, but I decided to do Heathrow with Monarch instead, and I forgot to update the web page. Okay, so our cruise altitude is 20,000, so 200.
click that in there and with trans altitude it's it's automatic to five thousand uh, six thousand but we want it at five thousand so we're just going to select five thousand in there and execute we can go down here as well and just have a look at all these good stuff <clears throat> but we're just going to leave that for now and we're going to click n1 limit um, for our takeoff we're going to use to1 takeoff one select that and it will say act and select if you're using the max or something you'll have to click this button first and then that okay so we're going to go to takeoff and our flaps we're going to be using flaps 10 so slap 10 in there and now our center of gravity we want to go over here and we want our takeoff weight center of gravity which is 27.7 um, so we're going to put 27.7 in there like that and now we're going to go to next page um, you've got your wind here so if you don't use um, Navigraph not Navigraph, um, Active Sky what you want to do is you want to go to Active um, Avitab Airports and type in where you are so the ICAO for Heathrow is Echo Golf Lima Lima search for that and your weather will be there and um, your wind will be, um, it'll look like, um, for example, 02020KT. That's what it is for Heathrow right now. Um, I'll write it on screen so it's easier. And that's what it will say here in the, in the, uh, the meta. But obviously I'm using Active Sky, so I'm just having a look on Active Sky now. And it, and it is, um, okay, it's changed now to 040 at 15 and gusts are 26 that's quite um, that's quite bad that actually okay so 040 at 15 so 040 slash 15 we're going to put that in there and it is dry at the moment so um, we're going to select that and now our um, our V speeds. Just gonna put my phone in my pocket so it doesn't buzz during the video. Um, 134 select, 135 select, 143 select. And our trim is 3.5. So this is our trim wheel here. And you can either hold it and select it, which takes quite a long time. What I like to do is I just scroll. But I've got a, um, a mouse where the button it's that Logitech mouse that you know that you press a button and then you can just um, use a scroll wheel as fast as you want. It's great. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to put it at 3.5. You basically have to guess where it is, but you can pretty much see that that's in the 3.5 position. So now we've done that, we've aligned, by the way, as you would have noticed. We're going to come back to the tab, fuel and weight, performance takeoff. So our airport, EGLL, runway 09 left. If you wanted another one, you just keep clicking it until you get the one that you want. Our winds is 15 knots. Okay, never mind. Uh, 040 slash 15. Does that work? Yep, there we go. Our Q and H for Heathrow is 1019. We're going to put 1019 in there. And we're also going to adjust it here. 1019. Our rating is optimum. Our ATM is max, flaps 10, um, aircraft um, on, AI off. Our takeoff weight, which we'll go back to here, is 27.7%, which is, sorry, here, takeoff weight, 63562. So we're going to put that in here, 63562. And our CG is 27.7. So that is all done. Our performance landing, we will do that when we are um, obviously landing. So that's all done now. Um, you're just going to have a little look through to make sure everything's good. Which everything is. So now we're going to come back to here. And we're going to put our um, auto brakes to RTO, rejected takeoff. We're going to test the lights here. 
which is also called a Christmas tree. Everything is looking good. Select them off, select that. And now we're going to um, do our speed. So we want 143, which is our V2 speed. So we're going to put 143 into here. Our altitude, we're going to put our um, top altitude, which is 20,000 feet. And we're going to select our flight directors on. Um, if these are down as well, you want to put them to the VOR1, but it should spawn in in the um, VOR1 and VR2 um, setting. So now we're going to go along here. If you've got really bad rain, you can put the weather radar on. But because I there's like no weather at all, it's very clear apparently for some reason. It shouldn't be clear. Um, I'm just going to load a new um, meta just to see if that helps. I've got Active Sky open, but it should um, it should be cloudy. Oh well, never mind. Um, but what we're going to take that off, and we're going to put airport position and terrain. Same on this side, airport position terrain, and I'm going to put this little knob to 20 on the first officer's side. On this FMC, I'm going to put um, the progress screen on, and you can see that our top of climb is at 26 nautical miles to get to 20,000 feet. Good luck to me. Um, TCAS is down here. I'm going to select it to TARA. If you're on VATSIM, you'll be given a score code, but since we're not, we're just going to put the default as 2200. Your radios will already be on. If they're not, they'll. Um, okay, they're not turning off. Brilliant. But if they are off, click the off button and they will come on. So that is everything that we need to do for now. Um, just double checking everything in case we have forgotten something. Which we have not at the moment. Okay, so now we want to push back. So, um, we're going to close all the doors, ground services, doors, close, 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 and close. We're going to get rid of um, Jar Design's ground handling things, so they are gone. And we're going to push back. We're going to terminate that as well. We're going to shut the cabin door, cockpit door. Nice little click. And we're going to push back. So ground services, um, better push back. If you don't know where you are as well, just go out here and press C. That will give you free room, and then you can just have a look at where you need to go. So what we need to do is we need to push back onto here. So we're going to go right down here and push back to here. So we're going to select request push back. And we want to go down to here, select where you want to go, and simply click and press enter. And once you've done that, um, we just wait for Tow Bloke to, um, to come push us back. At this moment in time, you can go to the PA system and welcome everybody on board. If you use a Ryanair livery or something, um, it will be defaulted to Ryanair. Um, but since Monarch don't have a um, F mod thing, it's just defaulted to um, United. So he will connect soon, and he will tell us when he is connected in a few seconds, probably. Hopefully. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. There we go, so he's ready to connect. Um you'll also see the aircraft starting to move. Move upwards. So if you have a look, for example, here, this line, you'll see the window getting closer to the line as the plane is being lifted up. Um it's beeping. So that means he is connecting and I really hope it does move up there we go as you can see the aircraft is moving up 
So he is connected and he's just picking us up. So once he tells us what a fantastic timing. So now we're going to turn our beacon on, we're going to release the parking brake and we can start engines. So we're going to put the seat belt signs to on and we're going to put the engine start ignition to both and engine 2 to ground. You have a look on this screen here and once this number gets to 21.0 that's when you will inject your um, your fuel. So we're just going to wait until 21.0 which is now and inject our fuel. You'll be able to hear it starting up and you can see that our engine is spinning nicely. So once that is done, you'll hear a click of this go to auto. And once that does go to auto, we can select the engine number one to ground. There we go, it's clicked to auto, and we're going to select ground. And we just do the same for the number one engine. So we wait for it to spool up to um, 21.0 uh, N2 limit. This is the N1, this is our thrust, and N2 is just um, all sorts. So we're going to select engine 1 to on. If you're wondering, by the way, this is the default um, Heathrow. I've not changed it or anything. Can't be bothered. This is the first time I'm actually flying out of Heathrow, so. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. So, now we've done all that and we're pushing back, we're just going to go right back to the FMC and departure and legs. So this is when, I'm just going to clear this active sky thing because it's annoying. Okay, so this is when you would go to um, departure and arrival and click departure. Select your departure, so mine is um, Charlie Papa Tango 4 Kilo, which is here select that, 9 left and execute that go back to departure and arrival arrival and we're going to do an ILS runway 28 approach and our um, star is uh, Victor Alpha Tango Romeo 1 Romeo so we're going to go all the way down to here Victor Alpha Tango Romeo 1 ok ok sorry apologies we're going to do um, ILS runway 10 and we're going to select the um, here apologies for that, runway 10 wind change, I'm used to flying to 2.8 um, so now we are done, we're going to select parking brake on and we're just going to have a look for any discontinuities so as you can see we don't have any discontinuities so we are done with the FMC um, as you can see here, our flight plan has loaded, so we're just going to double check. So we're going to select the um, the map thing to plan, and we're just going to step along to make sure that our flight plan is nice and good. And once we've done this, good, we're going to select disconnect. We're going to put this back to map, and it will um, enable our normal stuff. So now we are all done now, we're going to put our flaps to 10, that's 15 mark, flaps to 10, um, and now we're going to select your damper on. So loud, we're going to select the packs to left pack auto, isolation auto, right pack auto, APU bleed off. And generator 1, click down, generator 2, click down, APU off. Make sure you do the generators, because if you just shut the APU off as it is, the whole aircraft will shut down, as it's still an APU generator power. So now, so now the APU is shutting down, um, everything looks good on the overhead, our flaps are down, we're going to go to this page, click system, look down 
and we're going to have a look at this screen here. I'm just going to simply move our yoke to the left, center, full right, center, full up, center, and full down, center. I don't have rudder pedals, so I have to use my keyboard for rudder, so ignore the sound that I'm going to do now. Um, we're going to go full left, rudder, good, and full right, good. So that's all our rudders and tests done. I'm going to put it back to engine. And my um, pushback never actually lines up with the line. Anyway, so now we are gone. Hand signal, we missed it, but it's normally about here or here. And we're going to switch our taxi lights to on. We're going to go to Abitab, airport, click here, airport, scroll down, airport just so we know where we are taxiing to. So we want to taxi to um, here. So Alpha, is that Alpha 1, 2? Alpha 1, 2 and Alpha Bravo 1, 2. So we're going to taxi along here, up there and down there. Good. So we're gonna advance our throttles a little bit. My joystick isn't the best, so it just like wobbles. <laughs> So we're going to turn off our parking brake. Now we've started moving, we're going to decrease our throttle a bit. And we are on the move. So I will meet you when we are at Alpha Bravo 1, 2. Okay, we are back and we are at Alpha Bravo 1, 2, as you can see. And as you can see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn our landing lights on, runway turn off lights on, taxi lights off, put our strobes, oops, put our strobes on, and we're going to en engage auto throttle arm. So we're going to engage our throttles again so we can start moving. And as you can see from outside, um, our strobes are on. So we're just taxiing towards um, onto 09 left and we're going to line up and wait. To put the throttles to idle and do a nice, do a nice line up. Come on. I can, I can normally always do this and as soon as I press record everything goes wrong. God. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up straight. Nicely done. So we're going to stop and we're going to engage our parking brake. Now we're going to select uh, elapsed time. A timer will come up. And now we want to know where the um, toga switch is. So there is a switch under here which you can press, but. Um, Zibo has also mounted one here where it says mic so we're going to use that one as it's easier to um, to uh, to press so we're going to advance our throttles to about 40% take parking brake off engage LNAV and we're going to have a look at here as you can see it wants us to stay at that altitude so we're going to click vertical speed as well put it to about there and now we're going to advance to Togo so Toga will um, activate, so we're just going to do the rudder pedals. Oh my god, I was looking at the other screen then. Ignore this awful, horrendous takeoff. Um, we are quite light, so... Um, yeah, my X-Plane normally looks way better than this, because I normally have orbits and everything. But, so, rotate, we're going to rotate. We're going to put the gear up. As you can see, these purple lines, we want to let them line up. Um, we're currently under over 400 now, so we're going to engage autopilot. And you will see that we will start to climb. So we're going to put our flaps to 5. We're going to put our speed to 250. We're going to put our gear to off, our anti-skid to off, 
and we are currently turning following the L nav. We are not on the V nav yet, as um, we will want to get to um, Delta 10 1 Hotel before we engage V nav. If you don't use um, flaps 2, if you don't use SIDS and STARS, which you should, well, or if your first waypoint is above 10,000 and other waypoints are consecutive of that, you can hit VNAV as soon as you take off. But we are using vertical speed. Um, thank you. And we're going to go to um, plus 2-3. <coughs> Apologies, now we're in the air, we're going to switch our traffic to 20, which is also on the other side. Um, traffic will already be selected. I'm going to put our flaps fully up. Um, our trim is automatically well trimming. Um, we can turn our runway turn off lights off. And we just need to monitor the climb now until we reach our cruising altitude of 2,000 I mean 20,000 sorry so I will meet you when we're actually at 10,000 so I can show you what to do then so I'll see you at 10,000 uh, we have surpassed 5,000 so our Q&H HPA has gone yellow so all you do now is you select standard and that goes to um, the standard pressure of uh, 29 decimal 92 or 1013 um, so we are still climbing currently at 6500 and I will check back with you at 10,000 okay so as you can see we are approaching 10,000 now so we're going to turn our landing lights off our seatbelt signs off and we are good um, as you can see, we're going to um, we're most likely going to stay on vertical speed until uh, Ugnus Uniform Golf November Uniform Sierra. Um, the cabin announcement is going off. Just telling people to like we ask that you use, the lavatories located in use the lavatories. Brilliant. Um, so we are done now. Auto throttle is going nicely. We're going to advance our speed to 290 as 250 is for under 10,000 um, or if ATC puts in a speed restriction such as a VATSIM. Um, so we're still climbing as I said and we don't need to do anything else as of now so I will meet you at, um, at cruising altitude of um, flight level 200 so we are currently at cruising altitude and you would have just seen that there a T slash C that means top of climb there is also one on top of descent as well we're going to engage a VNAV now um, as you can see we're now following the VNAV it also says here VNAV path LNAV and FMC speed so that is nice and dandy. Default terrain looks absolutely shocking, doesn't it? I use Orbix for, do you know Manchester and, well, for Greater Britain. I have the Great Britain South, is what I'm, no I don't. I have Great Britain Central, is what I'm trying to say. Oh my God, it is too early. Um, so, so comparing Orbix to this, Orbix is beautiful. I mean, I used to use Ortho as well. But I didn't like, um, do you know when you're landing in an airport that's got ortho on it? It's dead blurry and I didn't know how to get rid of that. Now you can just download freeware scenery to sort that out. But um, with the, um, the freeware, you have to download a load of um, a load of different things. And I've done, I've done all that now, but um, I, I didn't want to do it because I didn't know where to put it or anything because they had no instructions. But if you are wondering, by the way, you just put them all in um, your custom scenery folder. Dead easy. But freeware scenery, it's really good. Like I used to use FSX before X-Plane 11 and the freeware on that was terrible, to be honest. I mean, there were a few nice freeware things like 
the DC-10, for example, the airplane, that was a nice freeware. Had a nice uh, virtual cockpit. Um, but the sceneries weren't good freeware, FSX. And then I came to X-Plane. And the freewares are like FSX paywares. They really, they really are. There's um there's a maker called TG TDG who makes freeware um, sceneries, and they're absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So um, if you do want better airports, download freeware. Payware airports are bloody brilliant. I have a few Aerosoft and a few um, Fly Tampa. And they are, they're amazing, absolutely fantastic. X Plane Eleven um, scenery paid um, add-on scenery pack things are brilliant, absolutely amazing. So we are currently at cruise altitude now, which I said about five minutes ago before I went on a rant, and um, we've got quite a long way until our top of descent, which is um, at Rubar. So when we get to about um, Lemgu, I think that's called Lemgu. They all have really weird like names. Anyway, so once we get to there, um, I'll check back in with you and tell you what to do. As there at the moment is nothing um, that we need to sort out or look at. I mean, you can go on peer system and level off, um, which will tell the passengers that they're able to walk around and do all that good stuff but yep we've got enough fuel um, at the moment we don't need to check anything so I'll check on you when we are near top of descent okay so we are back and we are near top of descent and as you'll see it says reset MCP alt so you're gonna put this to your base altitude so I'm going to put it to 2000 for now and then I'm going to check what our base altitude is. So our base is 3000 so 2000 will be sufficient. And you don't need to press anything else on here just as long as this is below below your base uh, your base altitude and it will start descending automatically at top of descent. Um I also have navgraf charts, so I have um, put all of these in. This is for the um, the arrival for runway for ILS one zero on the um, Vata one row one. Um, what 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 am I on? The um, Vata one Romeo departure arrival. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we will, can we see where we are? Yep. So we're going to come along here. Going to come along here. Probably do a little turn. And then come in for runway, uh, runway 10. There. So, we're just going to leave that there. And I've also got my other charts up as well. As you can see, we are descending. I've also got my other charts for the arrival of the, um, the thing. I'm just going to put in my go-arounds, actually. So this is dead easy to do. Um, usually, so what we're going to do is, um, as you can see, we go to MaxEv Dublin. So on here, that's MaxEv Dublin. So we're just going to put in our previous two. So Recep and Gannett. So Recep, Recep, sorry. Um, where's our Recep? and Gannett slap them in there and we have, what's our speed? 180 3000 so 180 forward slash 3000 um, obviously that's our speed and that's our altitude and then 157 3000 157 slash 3000 and we are good for the go around um, once we hit Gannett on the go around, I will engage the. I would engage the. Um, um, ILS. So that's why we don't have runway ten or anything because we're going to do the ILS. Um, I'm deciding should I do should I do a go around to show you. Yeah, why not? So as you can see, this is our. Hang on, let me just 
right now it makes sense sorry we're gonna do the step so here we are I'm just going along here just gonna put this to minimum so you can see um, coming along here gonna this is where we're going to engage the LOC and then once we're about here we're going to engage the um, APP so this is so the LOC is for turning APP is for glide slope I'll show you that when we come to the ILS so then we're going to come along here um, gun it good that's our runway which we're going to go around then we're going to come to Maxev, do a left turn to DUB, Delta Uniform Bravo, come back to RISEP and we'll probably, should we should we go to there actually beforehand, where's that, um, oh I missed it, OSLEX, let's, let's go to there first and then we can do a proper, okay so, um, put that there, OSLEX, you gotta put that there, O S <coughs> L E X slot that in there we've got a discontinuity so this will be a good way to show you simply click on the one below the discontinuity it will come up put it in the discon box and press execute um, 210 5000 210 I'm going to do 200 slash 5 thousand slap it in there and that is our go around procedure done I was going to double check on the plan and steps just to make sure that we're all looking good um, I was gonna there we go so there 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 good 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 okay good I like that it looks good so go around to dead easy and again I will show you what to do when we come to it. <clears throat> My phone's going off like that. Okay, so that's it. By the way, just so, just in case you're wondering. Um GS ground speed TAS true airspeed. 029 is the degree of the wind and 21 is the speed of the wind um, NM nautical miles Z hours that's what time it is that's what time we'll get to this waypoint here that's what time it is now so that is approximately three minutes I'm gonna set our bar barrow reference to 350 350 um, so that's a barrow, come on, barrow, so to 350, which is, no sorry, going to switch it to 600, because this is our going to be our minimums. Um, as you can see, these things are for the ILS, they will come into use when we um, get into the ILS. So, when we start... Um, setting up the aircraft for the ILS I will come back to you we are currently at 10,000 so we are going to turn on our landing lights turn on our runway turn off lights and turn on our fasten seat belt signs we're going to go over to here and tell everybody that we are descending I'm um, going to go back on to airport, as you can see, um, what are we doing? Okay, no, nope, we don't want that one, we want this one. So as you can see, we are on the track of the approach. Um, so we're going to follow this, do a little U-turn, come in, like I said. Then I'll switch to this one, where we can see closer what we're doing. This arrow is the start of the glide slope. So we'll get engage APP about here, where this arrow is, and then once it hits this arrow, it will start descending. And then once we're on the actual runway, we will go here, and we will decide where to park. I think we're going to park at um, gate 304, which is here. 
Um, there's one annoying thing about Navigraph is um, you can see like parking stands here, and it tells you where everything is. So um, yeah, it says three on five, but it's three or four, um, which is annoying. Bec but because as you can see here, this has gone really well. As you can see here, it shows up. The aircraft shows up, but it doesn't on parking stands so I don't understand that but hey ho on all of these three though it does show up obviously so that is good we are still on the track we're currently turning onto here so we're going to go all along down here and we're going to turn on here it beeped at me did it beep at me for a reason no a drag required so if it says that speed brakes pull it up and then it will start descending faster obviously because we have our speed brakes up uh, currently going through the clouds as it is fairly cloudy in Dublin right now by the way if you're wondering about um, these dirty windows it's a little um, texture pack thing I'll link it in the description um, but it, it's, it's really nice it's better than just having clear windows it looks a lot nicer so now we are at our desired um, speed so we're just going to put the speed brakes back up and we are going to follow the approach as you can see here is along here um, we've done everything that we need to do we're currently leveled out at 7000 which is a speed um, altitude restriction um, in fact, we can start setting up the ILS now, actually. So what we can do is we go over to our Avitab, type in your um, ICAO code of the airport, and it will come up with this. Look for the um, runway that you want. So we want runway 10. It does have ILS, Cat 3, and our frequency is 108.9. So we come down here to Nav and put in 108.9 decimal nine. just double check that cross, cross reference it 108 decimal nine. 108 decimal nine. good and then we switch to TFR which is transfer to that to the active one and then we come back over here and look for the CRS which is 98 so we put that in the course um, 98 Good, and we put it in in the first officer's one as well. Nine eight, so that is the ILS all set up and dandy. And then we're not going to engage it yet, obviously. Um, I don't tell me the wind speeds changed. I don't know. We're landing on runway one zero regardless. Um, so we don't need to do anything else regarding the. AP or the ILS frequencies yet okay just chug for me thanks OBS always causes my X-plane to really chug occasionally no idea why it's normally dead smooth but um, everything else looks good um, seatbelt signs are on APU is off landing altitude is at 300 which we want going to follow it's following the glide path flight path sorry ILS is set up TCAS is good radios are good if you want a Dublin ATIS switch it to 122 decimal 8 it'll tell you the ATIS but I don't I don't care about the ATIS because I have active sky and it tells me there so everything is good rejected um, auto brakes we will engage that when we are closer ILS we will engage that when we are closer so and flaps again we will engage them when we are closer so right now we're just sitting tight making sure it's following everything as we want it to make sure it's following the speeds make sure we're not over speeding or stalling which we are not we are flying nicely our base altitude is done courses are done autopilots are selected um, we are over 5000 so we don't need to select our 
um, Q&H yet, but I'm just going to go over to Active Sky, and right now, the Q&H for Dublin is 1028. I am. Um, I'll check that again um, when we come to 5,000, which will be pretty soon, actually. Um, top of descent here. So I'll get back to you once we reach the top of descent. Okay, so we are currently descending through 5,000. So we're just going to set the Q and H, which I'm just going to double check it again on Active Sky. Is still 1028. And so we're going to go over to the Q and H button, which is here, um, and put it on 1028 and press the STD standard. Um, and it's going to descend, obviously. Um, we're going to engage speed brakes. Our throttles are at idle. We're descending. Still speeding, but that's fine as we are descending quite rapidly. Um, we're going to clear this. And as you can see on the approach here, we're going to switch it to here. So we're going to soon turn, which we're turning now actually. So we're just following the glide path at the moment. We're going to put auto brakes to three. Um, right now we're going to engage the VOR LOC. So we'll level out at 3000 and then obviously we'll start descending. VOR LOC is um, localized and we are close to lining up and this is nearly in the middle so we're going to engage it now and we're going to engage the second autopilot as well as it's a cat 3 ILS and once we get within this thing up the glide slope will um, be intercepted and the VNAV path will change to G slash S, which means glide slope. So we're just going to double check all our lights now. Landing lights on, runway turn off lights on, taxi lights off, strobes on, local lights off, anti collision dun dun dun, all good and dandy. So we zoom in on the puppy lights two white, two red, that means we are at the correct height, glide slope has been localised, going to put the speed brakes up, and now we're going to arm them, so you just lift it up, and you just put it in the arm position, you'll hear a little click, going to put the speed right down to 151 for now, going to click init ref, and we want to land uh, flaps 15 at 156 knots, Put that up to 156, put the flaps to 2. Um, as I said, we're going to do a go around, so it doesn't really matter what speed we're at at the moment because we're going to do a go around anyway. Um, this is our flaps, flaps um, indicator. So when we get to minimums, we're going to do a go around which is very very easy to do um, so what we're going to do is we're going to now engage um, sorry disengage autopilot and auto throttle and we're just going to fly it manually now as we are about 1500 feet from the ground we're fly it manually we're still extremely um, extremely low so we're going to put the gear down extremely not extremely low Ex extremely uh, fast which 200 knots is far too fast and we are below glide slope so this is an awful approach so you are unstable so you would go around so what we're going to do is we're going to click this toga button engage our throttle Click the toga button, and as you can see, toga 
is engaged. Now we're going to pull up, put the gear up. Our trim level is set. So we're going to wait for um, all the gear to go up. L nav, done V nav, and it will take us to where we want to go. So we're going to do a go around track. Um, yep, we're going to do a go around track. Apologies, I forgot to do them. You're meant to put them when you're setting up the departure. I've not flown the 737 in ages. So, 2000, we're going to put this up to 5000, which is what we want. Just engage V now, put it on again, and it will start um, ascending. If it doesn't start ascending, which is a bug with the Zibo, simply go vertical speed and put it up to there. And we want, um, yeah, 220 will be, will be nice. I'm going to put the flaps to one just to keep us keep us nice and nose level um, landing lights and runway turn off lights actually land runway turn off lights can go off at the moment landing lights can stay on um, so we're just going to continue to go around I was going to go to plan and just make sure that we're going to follow everything correctly Oh, good. Gonna select this. We are um, steady at two two zero knots. Still climbing to five thousand, which is what we want to get to. Um, I'm just gonna type in here two two zero slash five thousand to get to get That's rid okay. of the A and B. There you go. Um, where's Max? Okay, so we want two two zero slash 5000 put that in there like that and now you can engage VNAV and VNAV path will come up and FMC speed um, if you don't want to go to 240 which we don't click speed intervene here and put it back down to 220 um, speed brakes can come up I don't know why it went to 240 as it's 220 all on the FMC. No worries. Flaps one is still down, as you can see here as well. And we are currently whatever's. Um, going to keep it there. Two two zero. Why are we descending? This is a bug with the Zibo, so we're just going to keep it on. Five thousand. I've not done a go around in the seventy seven in months. So as you can see, we're just following the go around. Then we'll come down here, come up here, and through here. Um, sorry about the shouting as well. Normally you would do that, but it's a little bug. Um, so we are now at 5,000 altitude holding. And because we're not on the VNAV, we will need to monitor these click standard. Actually, no, we don't want to click standard, do we? Because we're staying on 5,000. Um, if you're above 5,000, then obviously you click standard. But since we're at 5,000, we're going to leave it. Um, so we do need to monitor this. So when we get to RISAP, we will want to put our speed to 180 and send to 5,000. I mean, 3,000. And at Gannett, we will want to send, uh, put our speed down to 157, well 156 because our reference speed is 156 and our altitude at 3000 which we will then um, intercept the ILS for runway 10 again. So right now we're coming up to Dublin soon so I'm actually going to reduce the speed to one one uh, two one five um, apologies for making quite a few speech mistakes by the way none of um, this video is scripted so I'm just going off um, what's in my head so this will keep um, going yellow or not that's 
just because the altitude is um, being a bit wavy, which is fine. Water brakes are still on three, that's fine. The gear can go to off. Um, Seatbelt signs stay on. Your packs stay on. Everything is looking good. Flaps can stay at one. Good. So once we get to Dublin, um, we'll get to um, we'll get to Oslex. Um, Dublin is the air, actual airport is here. This is um, Aerosoft Dublin, by the way. It's, it's quite nice. So we we will want to land on this um, this runway here. I think is that is that right? Um, I can't actually see, but I'm pretty sure it's that runway. It's either that runway or that <laughs> runway is one of them. Um, I can actually have a look here, can't I? So runway 10 and... Yeah, so it's that one there, runway 10. So we're going to land on that. So when, once we do land, we're going to come in here and we're going to attempt to turn off at Sierra 2. Taxi along um, Sierra 2 to Whiskey 1. Um, then take a left hand turn after crossing runway 34 to Foxtrot 3 onto Link 3 onto Stand 304. Which is good because I always use Stand 304. <laughs> Um, it's just a stand that I like because it's not too far from the taxi and it's not too far from the departing airport. So we have hit Dublin, our speed, we're going to put this down to 200, which it will automatically decrease on the throttles. Um, as you can see by, by my blue arrow, my throttles are at idle on my hardware. Um, if you want to do that, uh, settings, hardware, Auto throttle engage lock throttle turn that on so when you actually move your throttles it won't engage the um, you know the auto throttle thing as you can see there if you don't have that on if you put that up there the throttle would max out which you don't want for example I mean if you do it on purposely you do want that but my mouse is next to my yoke so let's say I'm just moving my mouse and I knock the throttle like that you don't want it to increase the um, the speed so it says 5000 I'm just going to put the um, base altitude of 3000 in and just so we don't gain a load of speed I'm going to start descending now at a descent rate of 1000 feet per minute um, which will hopefully bring us to 3000 by Gannett and then our speed also won't be ridiculously high like it was last time <laughs> um, just because we were descending far too fast um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is as I've said before we're going to keep going onto Oslex we're going to turn do a right turn onto Rissap then do another turn onto Gannett and then once we reach Gannett we'll engage LOC which will turn us onto the ILS for runway runway 10 and then once we are lined up with runway 10 we'll click um, APP which will bring us onto the glide slope uh, once you are on the glide slope you will want to engage uh, disengage auto throttle and autopilot at a thousand feet um, so and flight in manually purely because um, apologies purely because auto land isn't fantastic on the Zippo so and, and plus in real life um, a lot of people a lot of pilots do disengage it at a thousand feet so we are still wanting to be at 200 feet I mean 200 speed 200 knots <coughs> um, got a really dry throat 
which you can probably tell from my uh, my voice. Um, so we are nicely descending to 3,000. We're going to stay at 3,000. Um, <coughs> and then once we get to Oslex, we're going to do the turns. Nothing else that we need to do now. Um, just checking TCAS is all good. Obviously, if you're on uh, VATS in frequency, I'll just show you now. Um, to change these, let's say we want to be on 118.350. So this big one, this big turn, is for the first three numbers. Then the small one is for the last three numbers. So 118. Yeah, then 350, you turn it to 350. Um, here. C can you not um, lag, please, for me? Thank you. Um, one minute, it's 350, and once that's tuned in, click transfer, and that will be your active frequency. If this is v if VHF1 isn't selected, which it should be, uh, if it's, for example, on that, switch it to VF1 and you'll be able to um, use your microphone on VATSIM or whatever um, whatever you use. For VATSIM, by the way, I use X-Pilot. Um, very nice to use, very simple, very easy to set up. And I use the Bluebell CSL packages with the offset installed. It works quite well. Um, on FSX and P3D, the models are a lot better, and they have more liveries, but for now, the um, X-Plane Bluebell CSL will work. So we're gonna, now we're going to put our speed down to 180. Um, in fact, we're going to put it to 160, 170, just so it gives us time to descend and um, come to our... VRF speed, so now we're going to put our flaps down to 10 and if you can't see the numbers like like that um, use this also if you didn't know, um, you can kind of sit here this actually has two and if you overspeed, they'll break which is quite a nice feature of Zibo sounds a bit mean, but oh well um, so now we've turned from OX, we're going on to RISEP, and when we get to RISEP, I will engage um, VORLOC. I'm going to put this to 160 knots. VORLOC, so it will turn onto the runway, which is here, and then we will engage APP. So right now, as we don't need to, to think, we're going to arm our speed brakes, which are now armed. We're going to inform the um, camera crew and we're going to tell them to prepare no we don't want to start service go away um, <laughs> airport so we are still quite nose high so we want to go 15 flaps like our VRF says and where are we now good so we're going to engage LOC this will engage once it's intercepted um, so we'll probably turn on the VNAV, and then once it's turned on the VNAV a bit, it will, uh, the LNAV, apologies, it will turn onto the VOR LOC look. So now we're going to put our speed to 156, which is what we want. Um, good, good, good. Also, reverse to us when we land, I have it mapped to my joystick. So, if you want to use that, make sure you map it to your joystick. It is essential. I think you can use F2, don't quote me on that. It might not be F2, but if it, if it is, obviously you can use that. Um, so, as you, as you can see, VOI LOC has been localised. So, we're going to have a look at this. Wait until it gets near the middle. And then we're going to engage APP. So let's engage APP now. APP is engaged. Single single channel. 
engage both. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's it's, it's weird. Um, our wind speed at the moment is 044 at 17. You can see our ILS has changed, so we are very close to being localized. If you zoom in, you'll be able to see the poppy lights, which currently are all red, which is fine because we're quite far out. And um, obviously, once we keep going, they'll get to two white, two red either side, and that's when the glide slope will um, come into play and be localized. So, when you get to here, our barrow reference is still set. Make sure your ILS is all still set, which it is. When we turn off lights, can come on. Um, engines are on continue and we are ready glide slope is um, localized and as you can see the poppy lights two white and a two red two red and two white so our throttles now are turning down spooling down so we can maintain our uh, landing speed speed brakes are armed that's fine, this alarm is for the gear and speed, so we're going to put the gear down, it's a bit high but the alarm's quite annoying, so we're going to put the gear down. Um, nose gear is locked, left gear is locked and right gear is locked. We're going to turn the taxi lights on. Cabin has been notified to be um, prepared. As you can see we've not got any uh, more legs as we have finished. So we're going to go to init ref, approach ref, our fleet uh, flap speed settings is flaps 15 at 156, which we've got here and here. So we are set, we are descending on the glide slope. Um, everything else is looking good. Um, I don't have AI traffic enabled by the way, because it rarely tanks FPS. <laughs> like really tanks FPS. Um, it's because because we're um, where's the airport? Because we're quite far out. Stuff like this flickers. Obviously, once you get close to it, it doesn't. But Dublin Airport, it looks very nice. On Vatsim, obviously, you have the uh, people there, so it looks a lot better. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to use Vatsim. Um, it's it's a little bit windy outside which you can't really tell we're currently on the thing so we're just going to switch to here as you can see we are here so we want like I said before we want to turn off at Sierra 2 hopefully 1400 feet 1300 feet 1000 good going to disengage that disengage that Take manual control, put throttles to um, whatever, below the glide slope, that's fine. Yep. Yep. There we go. Just want to watch the puppy lights. So we are good. Just make, just try and maintain your landing speed. Of which mine is 156, yours could be more or less, depends on your weight and um, altitude configurations. So we're a little bit high at the moment, but that's fine. 500. Our minimum. Our, yep, our minimums is coming up. Try and get the centre line. Our minimums continue. Going to continue. Going to pass the runway threshold. And we're going to retard now. And flare. Not the best landing, I can tell. Yet yeah, quite hard. Whoops. Oh well. So we're going to stay. Reverse thrust is enabled. And we are slowing down at a nice rate. 
80 knots. Going to disengage auto throttle. Put it, put the throttle up a bit. Throttles have come off. Good, good, good. So now we're going to turn off here. We're going to put the flaps all the way up. Landing lights off. When we turn off lights off, strobes to um, nav. Auto brakes off. Engines to auto and APU start. Now we're going to continue along Sierra 2 onto Whiskey 1. It says Hotel 1 here, but it's Whiskey 1. Um, there's, is that the engine test center? I could be wrong, probably wrong. Nope, that is the engine test center. So now we're coming up to a runway, so we want to turn our strobes back on. So other aircraft that aren't here can, um, can see us crossing the runway. Obviously you'd wait there on VATSIM and request to um, request to cross. So we are now off, so we're going to turn the strobes to auto. We're going to turn right onto Foxtrot 3 and then turn left onto Hotel. Um, Link 3 and onto stand 304, which is that one there 304, 305. Um, our fuel, we've still got a good amount of fuel left. Auto brakes are off, engines are continued. I'm going to switch the APU on now. We are now on link 3. Going to make a little right turn. So we are on going to gate 304. As you see, this is where we want to go. So we're going to then do a turn. The bloke man should be there to show us <laughs> if we're lined up. The bloke man. Man, if that's what they called them. Like, oh, we're lining up with the bloke man. Anyway, um, so we are lined up. I'm just going to go left a bit. Good. Right a bit, sorry. Our engines are throttles, throttled. Um, engines are idled. God. So we're just going to keep moving forward until he crosses his carrot things. Continue to go forward. I'm not going to engage my thrust because I don't want him to get sucked in. And we are ready to engage the parking brake. Engage the parking brake, APU is on, engine shut down, beacon off. Ignore that. That's that's a bug with the Zibo. Oh no it's not. <laughs> it's auto gate. <laughs> I, th I thought it was um I thought it was the engine fire then. So don't ignore that. That's that's for the gate. Um, so now we are done. We're going to turn off the seatbelt signs. We're going to engage the packs. So air conditioning comes on and we're going to open the doors. Once we've turned the taxi lights off, that would be a good idea. Ground services, doors open and cargo open. Going to set the cargo people things to come up. And that is us officially landed at Dublin. Um, so thank you for joining me on this tutorial. Um, if you have any requests for any other aircraft, uh, please don't hesitate to message me on Twitter or leave a comment on YouTube on in the um, in the comment section, obviously. Um, and I hope this tutorial was easy to easy to follow. Um, I will be doing more tutorials on the um, Flight Factor 757, 767, Magnite 787, um, and the Tolis A319. I've already done a tutorial on the Tolis A321, so the A319 is pretty much identical. But um, I'm just going to do it anyway, just in case. And um, yeah. I'm going to do a 727 tutorial as well, because that, and because that is a beautiful aircraft to fly. 
So like I said, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.